Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Bruce Zabowski Studio. Today I'm in the studio uh, working on some uh, smaller pieces that have been laying around, just need some finishing up. This is one of them. A little value painting I did of the neighbor's house across the street. Really like how it turned out in the value. Now I'm going to put some color on it, so let's get going. Okay, what I've done is I've pre-mixed some piles of color on my palette that I'll show you in a moment, but what I did first was I mixed up a, a sky color um, to uh, judge how bright and toned or toned down on one of the uh, colors of the sky. So this little spot right here is that example of the sky color. And once I feel comfortable with that, then I mix the other colors that will be the, the uh, mass tones of the other objects, like the dark green of the trees and so on with the house. And I'll show you that in a moment too. But I'm going to zoom in here see if you can see it. A little spot of color. Hold on. Okay, here's what I'm talking about. Right above the roof there. And it pretty is spot on with the value of the tone I put in there before, but that's what I'm going to mix. And then what I did was I mixed up that sky color. And then we have the other base tones of the trees that can be uh, minor adjustments. These are probably about 75%, 80 uh, maybe 85% mixed to where I want them. Then I can push and pull as the painting progresses. And uh, But that's what I got going on for some starting uh, uh, piles of color to facilitate uh, just getting some uh, base tones on there. Then I'll do comparisons. Hey, everybody. This is Bruce with Abowski Studio. So, like I said, this is a little grayscale painting I did. I don't always do this sort of thing, but I like to experiment once in a while. And starting out with those uh, previously mixed piles of color that are pretty much nailed at different major elements in the painting helps to uh, get uh, some efficiency in your painting. And then you can nuance it towards a warmer, cool temperature. Here I am taking the sky color and cutting around the dried shapes here. This whole painting, of course, is uh, all dry. And uh, just... Uh, describing some of the form of the tree leaves and that sort of thing and it's really useful to uh, sometimes work on a dry surface kind of helps out to uh, not have to worry about in, inner, any uh, intermixing and also potentially if depending on the, how much area you cover if for some reason you don't like an area of color that you decided to put in there you can wipe that out with a little bit of turpentine and start over and your under underpainting will not be disturbed. You you got to be careful though, because you might have a thin film of color, so you would have to really clean it well. Now I'm getting in that base tone of green that I'll go into later to uh, sh suggest highlights on the leaves and all that sort of thing. I've always liked this house across the street. It's my neighbor's house, and I've painted it couple times over the years and uh, what's interesting is the actual house of the color is not red but a murky kind of boring green so I took some artistic license there now just a little time lapse to show that uh, technique I was using and just going over the whole uh, tree area to bring out some of those shapes getting in a little dark and it's nice to get into a little wet wet paint to facilitate some blending now here I am starting to get the uh, color on the house and uh, believe I used a little bit of mix of some uh, cad red light lizard and crimson and burnt sienna in varying proportions to achieve the red of the house it's all going to be relative to what's going on around it to on how red something would look in this in this scenario and uh, it was a challenge because I usually am not attracted to things that are red it's just not my cup of tea but I thought I'd challenge myself on this piece and uh, push the chromatic envelope so to speak now I'm just doing this uh, sort of painting around the details of the architectural uh, elements in the painting and the brush I'm using is the Robert Simmons sapphire line around and I have a couple flats too and I really love this line I highly, highly recommend it this painting was actually originally painted uh, in uh, 
outdoors right off, right off my porch when I did the uh, gray painting. And now this is, of course, I'm putting in the um, color, but this is the part of the painting process I really like is when I do what I call I'm turning on the lights, putting in those, the sunshine and all that sort of thing. And now that I all have these base layers to understand the relationships more to the other colors in a piece and find out if I have to uh, chromatically increase some uh, color, gray some down, all that sort of thing. Now, your viewers out there, you know, you might be seeing me, of course, in this painting process using some uh, smaller brushes for this whole painting. And yes, I could in certain areas block and be a little more chunky with the paint with a little bigger brush. But I feel that it takes away from the uniqueness that you can describe the form for uh, different subjects that you may be painting. And uh, the bigger strokes can be, for me personally, uh, be a little distracting especially for the level, uh, you know, the type of realism I, I'm doing. I'm not uh, um, really doing uh, a super loose painting. So that's why I tend to use uh, something more in line with the scale of the objects in the painting. So just the paint strokes don't stand out. The elements in the painting, the subject matter stands out. I'd love to hear what you think on this subject and uh, how you approach uh, painting subject uh, subjects such as this. Uh, create a little dialogue and uh, spread some ideas out there. Now just a little time lapse of a uh, little finessing here and there of paint. And I also enjoy really doing unusual uh, cropping. Most people probably obviously wouldn't crop in this sort of manner, but I really enjoy kind of unorthodox cropping methods and then having sort of a presented in a realist fashion and uh, and it's funny because I painted this you know, on location right outside on you know right outside on my porch and uh, I still crop like how I would if I'm looking through a camera so it's pretty cool that way and this part was fun too where you get into really I'm putting on thicker layers of paint I thin to paint some uh, to get it thick, not super runny, of course, and I just lay those uh, highlights on, and it's a really, really nice look. It makes everything pop really nicely. And what I used uh, quite a bit of cadmium yellow uh, in that to uh, really warm it up, and I think it, it worked really well. You got to be careful when you're doing this. Sometimes when you get distracted and not realize that a uh, element is going into shadow and won't have a highlight it will be a little cooler different highlight so you want to pay attention to that and uh, watch out for things like that it can be so uh, engrossing to work on certain elements and you don't realize just how they might be getting out of out of control on you in relation to everything else so now just cleaning up some edges Touching up some shadow color, which was pretty much just ultramarine blue and white. Okay, in just a few seconds, we're going to come up on a little break from the voiceover. And just let you know how I feel. The painting's coming along here. But again, just uh, getting in a little details, darkening up some shadows of the porch. Okay, I'll be back in a minute or so. Okay, we're getting there with the painting. It's coming along pretty good. I'm uh, shooting with the iPad here in the studio because uh, as uh, you've seen probably in some other couple videos with shooting with my Canon Elf inside the studio here are these LED lights. Kind of, uh, I guess it, it pulses in the, in the video. I'm not sure why. So, which is a bummer, but I hope the iPad's doing okay. And... Uh, I'm kind of liking how it's turning out. I'm glad I changed the house color. Uh, I'm going to work a little more in trees, get some tree trunks in, and work on that. Just thought I'd show you how the palette's coming along in the progression of the painting here as I mix up new colors. Some are sort of like little strings with the blue pile there. Others are independent colors, but I keep everything kind of separate as I need 
to adjust different things or need the original color, that sort of thing. Okay, I'm back putting in the tree trunks. So yeah, how you saw the palette there. Very, very handy to just create basically strings working from your base mother color. So you always have those colors to go back to to adjust things in the painting. Very efficient way of working for me. I've really adopted that quite frequently, especially in, in outdoor work. And uh, as you saw, putting in the uh, tree trunks. And now I'm just touching up some areas in the green because uh, you want to be careful I'm painting I'm painting uh, fairly realistically so I I want hard and soft edges and I don't uh, certain looks to paintings can have that sort of especially uh, some plain air work have that chunky look and you're just cutting around with sky to create the leaves and that can have its own stylized look so I'm, I want to be careful I want to have a freeness to, to this subject and I'm trying to blend my my plain air uh, style with my my studio style, so I'm in kind of transition. But you want to watch your edge control, and uh, it can be difficult, especially because you have your sky in there. Uh, l there's another method would be to do all all your your trees and leaves and that sort of thing, and then cut in with the sky, because you you might uh, have a less chance of. Uh, making your your green dulled down from uh intermixing with your sky color so but if, it depends everyone has their own way of working now this is cool part that pipe thing was actually on the house i think it was a, a power feed-in sort of thing and i decided it just there just isn't enough information to explain to the viewer what it is so this is where we as artists need to make changes I probably should have done that at the time I painted the house, but, you know, things don't always work out that way, But so we can fix it in the final uh, rendition here. And it's a little bit uh, uh, heavy element in terms of uh, darkness. It's really committed. At the time I painted it in the grayscale, so covering it up with the red paint, the red paint is pretty opaque, but... I may need to go back over this with another layer so you don't see that ghosting through the previous uh, object. So that's also something you want to be careful of. And it can be amplified if you use, depending on the medium you use, that might make your paint translucent. So things to think about. Cleaning up some curves of the architectural elements. Overall, I feel it's a pretty good... Uh, receding into space effect I, I like it but I felt that it just needed some kind of like shadow of a tree off scene just a bit kind of a showing on the house also just to break up that strong diagonal line of the shadow on the house just kind of trying to blend into the previous paint layer so there's no like pieces of the paint that look separate from other pieces you want to integrate everything now what I did throughout the painting as I was doing this whole painting was I kept you know I'd spread the paint around a bit but I would always go back and get more paint to really kinda try to get the paint on there to have paint to work with to blend and that sort of thing and to commit like if I had too thin of a paint layer trying to do what I'm doing right now with putting in the uh, identifying some individual leaf clumps and stuff uh, with too thin a paint it just wouldn't uh, lay on there as well and as easily and now I'm just I just felt like that far edge of that side of the house needed to have a little lightness to it again just going over some final details so I hope you really uh, kind of enjoyed this little insight to how I might finish up a grayscale painting. And, and I, I really recommend you also try it out. Oh, here I am putting in the highlights on trees, which really popped it to life also. Okay, we're going to be wrapping up this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, drop me a line. Let me know what you thought of the process. And I... Uh, Really recommend you try these grayscale paintings. You really get the values nailed. Don't have to worry about those. Then you just overlay your color. 
So until the next video, take care, and I'll see you then. Bye. Okay, everybody, this wraps up this painting session. I want to thank you for joining me. Pretty happy with how it came out. There's a few minor things I'll do uh, in the bottom here once the paint layers dry, but uh, had a great time, and I want to thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe and uh, go back and check out the, uh, my other videos for everyone else. Thank you for continuing to watch them. And for everybody, hey, go to my uh, Facebook page, Jabowski Studio. Follow me there. I post uh, little photos and such of my painting adventures, some that I don't do videos of, so you never know what you're going to see. And uh, take a look at my website, www.habowskistudio.com. I have burnt umber over here, titanium white, ivory black, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, yellow ochre, cad yellow medium, cad yellow light, burnt sienna, cad red light, and alizarin crimson. Uh, I thought I'd add in for more of a, some earthy uh, primary see ivory black, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna tied in with my normal. I normally use the ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and so on with the pairs over here.